The Marketplace page is at developer.windowsmobile.com. From the Marketplace page, you'll see several important components of content that you want to be aware of. First of all, the ability to download the SDK or Software Developer Kit for Windows Mobile Developing. This is a key tool set that you'll need to begin building your applications for Marketplace. The next component is here in the Development Resources section where you can download additional resources to support your development project. Things like the Windows Mobile documentation, gain access to the forms, and to watch videos and webcasts like this one. The next section is here where you can see Marketplace specific resources like the application submission guidelines, Microsoft's guidelines for application policy and content, and the process of submitting your application to multiple markets, which is available in the market validation guidelines document. Further down on this page, you'll see links to access other developer programs, like the Microsoft Partner Program, RampUp, and BizSpark. Another great feature of this page is the ability to see what's coming new from the Marketplace team, both in the form of blog entries as well as events that you should consider participating in. When you click on the Marketplace tab, you'll get a great summary of the features of the Marketplace, the fact that it offers a global distribution mechanism, the ability to easily manage your applications, and that it uses tools that you're already familiar with to inc increase your revenue potential. Either from this page or the earlier overview page, you can register for Marketplace with the registration button. Let's go ahead and register as a Marketplace developer. Once you've clicked register, this page allows you to review all the things you'll need to complete the creation of your developer account. One, you'll need to get a Windows Live ID. Two, you'll need to sign the application provider agreement. Both of these things are available via the links on this page. You'll also need to create a profile and provide company or personal information and pay a, the annual subscription fee of $99. Let's go ahead and create an account. From this screen, you can sign in using your Windows Live ID. One of the important things to consider as you sign up for your Windows Live ID is that this email will be the one used by the Windows Marketplace team to communicate with you and is how you will sign in and manage your account. All of the transactional emails regarding application submissions will go to this account, so it's important that this email is monitored regularly. For company accounts, you may want to consider that the Live ID used here and the, e and the associated email will need to be accessed by others in your company. This may be an important reason to consider creating a new Windows Live ID specifically for your Marketplace developer account. Once you've signed in, you have the ability to read the application provider agreement, accept the terms, and click Next to begin creating your account. It's important that you read the entire agreement and note that you have the ability to print the entire agreement either before or after accepting the terms. Now that I have accepted the application provider agreement, I'm taken to the first screen for creation of the Windows Marketplace developer account. You notice that the name and the email address are pre-filled based on the name and email address associated with the Live ID. This name is what will appear as the publisher in the application catalog. I'm going to create an individual account, but you'll see here that you also have the opportunity to create a company account. Important notes are that this name will appear as the publisher in the catalog. For an organization or a company, this must be the full name of the company as it appears on official business records and tax forms, and it will be used for vetting your developer account. If you're creating an individual account, enter your name and note that this will also be used as part of the vetting process. The company website is optional, as is the entry of the Microsoft Partner Program ID if you have one. The next set of fields is your corporate contact information. This is needed for vetting and for signing the certificate. If you're creating a corporate account or a company account, this needs to be a corporate officer or someone of authority at the company who can authorize the user who is requesting the publisher certificate. This person needs to be available to respond to requests by email or phone possibly if needed during vetting. If you're creating an individual or sole proprietor account, enter your name, but note that the email address here will need to be different from the one with which you registered. Note also that a phone is required. If you are creating the Marketplace account for a company or a corporate entity, you'll need to note that the email address of the person that you provide must be different than that of the registrant. The email should be a monitored email address, and it's important that the email should be uh, from the same domain as the company domain. Note that the corporate contact should expect to receive an email from Geotrust asking him or her to validate that you as the registrant are authorized to submit apps on the behalf of the company. Let's move to the company address section. For individuals, use your physical address. 
For non-U.S. developers, the address used here must match the address on your W-8 tax form. The information on this page will be used for vetting and tax purposes. The next step on this page is entry of taxpayer identification. You'll need to choose the tax entity type. In this case, I'm going to use individual or sole proprietor. Enter a U.S. taxpayer identification number. If you're creating an organization account, here you would enter the employer identification number. The format is important. For an EIN, the format needs to be 12-3456789. For an individual social security number, the format needs to be 123-45-6789. If you are a non-U.S. based developer, you will need to complete the following additional steps to get paid. Provision of a U.S. tax ID, TIN is recommended. If you don't provide one, you will have to withhold payments at a default rate of 30%. It's important to remember that you're doing business with a U.S. based company, so U.S. tax laws will apply. A second step is to send the appropriate W-8 form. For most cases, this is the W-8-B-E-N form to Microsoft. The third step is to provide your value added tax or VAT identification number to Microsoft. Once you've completed these steps, enter your name exactly as it's presented in the box here. As we mentioned before, there's a $99 annual subscription fee for your Marketplace Developer account. This subscription fee is non-refundable. We'll enter in the credit card information for the subscription fees. As you enter your credit card information, please make sure that the name on the card matches your name that the country that you enter is the same as the one associated with your Windows Marketplace account or other live IDs you might have. Otherwise, your registration could be denied. It's also important to note that the country entered for your billing account, your credit card account, determines the language in which you will see the developer portal. Entry of a French credit card will cause the developer to see the French version of the developer portal. Entry of a US-based credit card will cause the developer to see the US-based version or the English-based version of the developer portal. Next, you'll need to enter your billing address, as I've done here. If you already have an existing Live ID with a billing relationship with Microsoft, make sure that your profile has accurate and complete information so that your billing address with the Live ID will match the billing address that you provide here. To verify these steps, you can go to billing.microsoft.com. Now that we've entered a user profile, provided business details, and provided payment information, we see this congratulations screen. Before you submit your applications, you'll need to do the following final steps. One, you'll need to validate your email address. This is done through an email that Microsoft will send you after you register. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Second, GeoTrust will need to obtain approval from the corporate officer that you listed. As part of the vetting process, the corporate contact you entered will receive an email from GeoTrust asking him or her to validate that you, as the registrant, are authorized to submit applications. If you're registering as an individual, you will need to approve yourself. But in either case, it's important that you look out for an email from GeoTrust to the corporate email account that you provided. Next, you'll need to complete the vetting process. After the corporate contact has validated your application, you'll receive another email from GeoTrust asking for some documentation. Please follow the instructions in that email carefully and forward GeoTrust the required documentation. This is a required step to verify your identity and issue you a publisher ID and certificate. Let's go ahead and take a look at the email validation request. Here, I've signed in to the email account associated with my Windows Live ID and I see a new email from Windows Marketplace for Mobile. Clicking here, I see the link that I'll need to click on to confirm the email address associated with my developer account. And here we see the confirmation screen confirming that my Windows Marketplace developer account email has been confirmed. So here I've logged into my corporate contact email where I see an email from GeoTrust asking me to approve my Windows Marketplace for Mobile order ID. Opening this mail, I'll need to follow the URL shown here to approve or deny the request for a Marketplace account. Notice that the applicant information, in this case my name, email, and phone number, is provided. Clicking on the link takes me to the GeoTrust site where the account administrator, billing, and corporate contact information is presented. Your corporate approver, or if you are an individual, you, will need to click I approve or I do not approve here. Here we see the confirmation screen that the order has been successfully approved and note that it presents the order ID. Here I've logged into the primary email account associated with my developer account and you'll notice a purchase confirmation for the Windows Marketplace for Mobile annual developer subscription. Clicking on this mail, I get confirmation of my subscription to the Windows Marketplace for Mobile developer program. 